Six years ago, Vogue published an article in its July issue titled, It's Fashion Racist. It caused a firestorm and led for calls for more diversity on the runway and in the design houses. Fast forward to 2014, have things gotten better or worse? Here to discuss is fashion activist and former model Beth Ann Hardison, editor-in-chief of JCReport.com, Jason Campbell, and designer and writer Keyboy Chase Marshall. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Hi, how are you? How are you? Hello. Happy yeah. Fashion Happy Week. Happy <laughs> Fashion Week. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Fashion involved. Week. You said what? For those involved. For those yeah. involved. Oh, that's very true. <laughs> Beth Ann, during last Fashion Week, you joined arms with Naomi Campbell and Iman, and you launched uh, an initiative called Balance Diversity. And that was uh, aimed to get more models of color on the runway. Right. In the year since, has there been progress? Is it getting better or worse? It's better. Mm. It's better. Yes, I'm happy to say. You're happy to oh, say. I'm clicking my heels. <laughs> <laughs> happy to say. Yeah, it's better. What has led to it becoming better? Aggression. Well, Mm. revolutionary tactics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you sort of like, in some kind of good way, I think it's nice that it's been four years when I didn't, when I laid back. The activism mm -hmm. was sort of quiet. Mm -hmm. And you watch, and then you see things happen. And then I think what happened is that you just at some point thought, well, if they don't mind doing it, I guess we don't, they don't have any problem with us saying it. So we said it. We, we named it. houses. We, mm -hmm. we claimed who was and who wasn't. And uh, it made a big difference. And then I had meetings with the CFDA. I had meetings with American Vogue. And I think, you know, everybody's like, OK, got it. And it, I, I, I hope I'm right in saying this, but I think someone like Miss Winter, she likes being the first of doing anything. She's a maverick. Mm -hmm. She's going to take something on. She's going to take it on first. The January issue of American Vogue was wonderful. I was very impressed with it. Mm -hmm. It was diverse. It was really nicely done. Um, even the February issue, and now we have something more coming out from Vogue in March. Mm -hmm. um, CFDA has supported the initiative, and they made me send out guidelines, just like they did with the health initiative. And a lot of the designers stepped up. Do you think mm -hmm. naming names prompted a number of designers to step up? Because you named I cannot, Calvin Klein, mm -hmm. Donna Karen, Mark yeah, Jacobs. I can't. You named the names in a, in a letter that was very pointed. Do you think that sort of outing these designers encouraged them to do the... Uh, the right thing, if you will? I think naming, I think the way it was handled made people feel self-conscious. I don't know if those particular ones made, was, it made them self-conscious, but I know that it, for the industry, it needed it. The, the industry was really flatlined. It needed mm. something to twist itself up, to give it something. And even if you're just talking about an issue, it helped. It, it made people all around Europe start talking about it. And let, I have to give a lot of credit to Mutual Prada, too, mm -hmm. because she really, for what she did before, changed things. A mm -hmm. lot of people had pointed at Mutual Prada as being one of the issues, one That's of the right. designers who mm -hmm. was um, not very keen on using models of color. No, what mm -hmm. she was is she wasn't keen on using anyone that was a supermodel or recognizable. Hmm. So she flattened that out. Jason, you look like you don't agree with yeah. this. Well, what are you thinking? Well, <laughs> all right, Jason, well, jump in. It's interesting, Bethann, that you chose Muchia Prada to mention in this segment because, yes, while there is a black model in this uh, in this spring campaign that everyone is talking about, well, what they're talking about is that there hasn't been a black model in her campaigns, practically in her shows over the last decade. It was 15 years between Naomi and uh, Jordan. So to extract her in this conversation and laud her as someone who's leading the charge of diversity in this industry, I think that's really, I think that's wrong, actually. Okay, okay. Well, who do you think I, there are some people that are doing it right? I think there, Because I you, think know that she, you know what, not talking about the advertising, I wasn't talking about the advertising, I was talking about as a designer, using five girls, putting them on the show and then doing it again and then continue the advertising, do you know that that influences the other designers, that the other designers are now using girls of color in their advertising? That has never been done. Beth, and I, I, and I, I will re recognize that and accept that, but that's a recent development. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's a what development we're talking about. the last year, and we're that's talking great. About. And that's great that's all we're to talking see about. that. It's I, great to I, see evolution. I think as well, in acknowledging the evolution, one has to question the motive and the commitment. I, 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 all I do is just and, sort of stay on it. Well, yeah, and I applaud I your work. I'm inspired by your work, but as a design professional, I know that the motives and commitment to inclusive casting can sometimes 
not be authentic because there's very little inclusivity within the building of studio teams and creative fields. Yes, well, yes. Kibwe, while we're on the subject, let's talk about that yeah. because at Tracy Reese's show on Sunday, she mm -hmm. said lack of diversity is not an issue just on the runway, it's behind the scenes as well. Of course. You've worked with everybody from Michael Kors to Oscar de la Renta. Yes. In your experience mm -hmm. as a black male designer, mm -hmm. what was that like and were you often the only one? looking around the room? I was always the only de black mm -hmm. designer in any studio I worked in at Oscar okay. de la Renta, Ralph Lauren, Michael Kors, Jay Mendel, Isaac Mizrahi. Um, it is not indicative of uh, those studios' uh, attitudes towards black people necessarily that I was the only black designer, but it might be indicative of an industry's attitudes towards those who are not like now, we know in America that race and class often operate hand in hand. And in this industry, more so than any other, the aesthetics of those discussions become really dynamic in terms of how black designers are able to grow professionally. It's very mm. difficult because it's, it's really economics. Yes, it is. It's, it's economics. But when I grew up in the industry, and I grew up in the garment industry, mm -hmm. there were people because there was, it was a merge of different times. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's a wave of change. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the motives, I love that you said that because at the end of the day, I really don't care what their motive is as long as they keep using us. And I do want you and I and people like myself who were in the studios to be more of us. And things will start to change. We just have to position it to that. And well, I hope so. I hope so. We also so. have to I be careful so. about rewriting history as well. And it's mm -hmm. not about history. It's really mm -hmm. about what's going on now. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to be very careful about that which we bring forward as saying that they're exemplary in creating change when in fact they may be strong arm into making that change happen. And as Beth Ann says, that is okay too. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, credit should be given where credit is really due. And I don't think Muchia Prada is the individual that should be credited with the diversity that's going on in the industry at this time. But why not? Well, when we talk about some of the people that are behind <laughs> the scenes curious. and the designers, why not? how can they get involved in industry since they're pigeonholed, since they're looked at differently? How can I, they break in? I've had very direct conversations recently about what is the next step as opposed mm -hmm. to what is the problem. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to say that the problem isn't being actively identified and addressed. So addressing the problem is not redundant, nor is it gripe session. Mm -hmm. It is necessary to do that first. Yeah. But I will say that when I speak to my friends in design who are white, Asian, and Latino identified, I say this is ultimately about you all being vocal about the lack of black professionals in this mm -hmm. industry. Because people will only listen to those who don't have something directly at stake. That's very at true. At this point, yeah. very good point. It, and if you look at, let's say, the American civil rights narrative, it is not ultimately in the hands of those who face discrimination it's to affect change. It's the others who helped mm. us. So, and in this industry, yeah. there is zero signs of there being a collective effort for changing the status quo. Um, we, we were discussing it before, and usually we're the only black person in those rooms that's considered, let's say, assimilated. Mm -hmm. And no one is discussing, well, wait a minute, this actually looks strange that it's always so that there is a single black person in this room. Yes, we recognize it, but our peers and our colleagues and so forth just do not. Mm -hmm. And they, this is not an issue. It's really a non-issue for them. And mm -hmm. that's a huge problem.